Hey everyone, <laughs> I filmed this intro two times, so this is the third time. Let's hope it's the third time lucky. Basically, it's going to be a studio vlog, which I'm not intending to be too long. I will update you on my shop. I will update you uh, of the plans that I have for this week in terms of my ultimate palette. And also I will show you a couple of things that I drew in my sketchbook, what's coming next week. And of course, Cassart vlog. So I filmed or Cassart tour, shall I say. Um, the art shop in Hampstead. It's my first art shop that I went to in terms of proper art supplies and visiting it very frequently. I used to live 10 minute walk from there so quite often in the evenings I would just stroll in there half an hour before it was closing and just had my peace and quiet there and um, not that I had any chaotic life at that time anyway. Yeah it's uh, it's it's a shop that brings me joy every time I go in there. So I um, asked them if I could film a little bit inside and they said yes, uh, I was welcome to do that. And I will uh, share inside the shop if you're, if you're interested to see. Let's start again with the Etsy uh, shop. So um, I have an Etsy shop, Alona Creates, if you are new. And I sold out on quite a few stamp sets uh, last week and the week before. And I'm planning a restock, but I wanted to get an idea of, of numbers and generally what um, stamp sets to restock. I sold out on Color Theory a while ago. And I wonder if any of you would be interested in a restock for this stamp set. And uh, so that's what it looks like or what you can achieve with it. Um, but there's a lot more ideas and tutorials on my channel. Swatch Joy, I sold out on this one. And I wonder if any of you would like this stamp set. I think a couple of people messaged me on Etsy already um, so I know that some of you definitely would like it. There is also a new stamp set coming which is a florals and it's going to be like botanical floral type of um, vibe to it and uh, so that's something I'm working on currently and designing it. Um, so that's uh, my shop. Then for the rest of the week so I'm filming this studio vlog which I believe will be coming still this week on Friday, but I'm filming it today is Wednesday. And for the rest of the week, I'm intending to work on the um, ultimate palette. So lovely Lindsay, frugal crafter, um, she has reviewed this set and some uh, people commented on it. And um, a few people said that they couldn't uh, afford it at the price and uh, that they would like to buy maybe a tube or so of the paints and not the entire set. Um, so I thought that's actually a good idea. I haven't thought of that before to sell them as singular tubes. So I won't be selling a large number um, of those tubes individually. So I'll, you know, I'll, I'll basically take a few sets and just separate them into individual tubes. So if any of you are interested, make sure you check it out. It was designed to be a palette, and uh, but I do understand that some of you cannot afford it. Um, so that's why I want to make it um, possible for everyone to be able to try my watercolors. Also, what I will do is actually create half pan sets. So that will take me longer to do. And because they will need to dry and then I'll need to refill them a few times and I will need to sort the packaging for that. It's a lot of, a lot of uh, work. But again, I want for, for everyone who wants to try it but can't afford this big set. Every tube is 14 mil and um, yeah. So I, I think I priced it fairly simply because these are handmade, even though I sourced um, a manufacturer who is doing it for me. I have to pay for work. Uh, you know, the tubes cost money, the pigments cost money. So I think sometimes people don't realize how much money has to be invested for a product to become 
available <laughs> and uh, yeah and then obviously because they're handmade they will be always charged extra i mean i could even go more like there are some watercolors uh, that are sold in tubes and they are handmade that are a lot more expensive i didn't want to go to that level so i thought i will price it fairly and also keeping in mind they come in a metal tin and not in a paper box but that's something um, i'm thinking of considering for for uh, next release i might just ditch the metal tin and go for a more affordable uh, paper recyclable box which won't be as fancy as this but then it will kind of make it possible for me to bring the price a little bit more down so having said that when the half pen sets will be available i'm not sure yet i would assume in a couple of weeks oh, what are we today 20 oh, 22nd of february realistically speaking probably beginning of march uh, first week of march i would say but of course i will update you um on socials when i can do that or when i know when it's happening so let's talk about my sketchbook i have done a bit of drawing i mean today is wednesday so since the half term ended i have been able to draw again i didn't really have any time to be doing any drawing during the half term and I did a little bit, but not much. I think I've done, have I done this page? I think I've done this page, which was inspired by a pine cone that um, I picked up from the grounds um, at Ickworth House. Yeah, so I did a bit of that. Um, but yeah, otherwise no time for drawing. So, but since I have done a little bit, I have done this um, flower right here which is basically uh, a bigger version. I really like these flowers that we've been drawing and um, kind of developing patterns and things. Throughout the process, I have learned what I like and what I don't like. And then I wanted just to create a bigger version of basically this original flower here, but then playing a little bit more with the petals and um, just make more of a statement i personally really really enjoyed um i enjoyed drawing it but i will be adding color to it as well and then i've done um a fun little illustration here on both pages so these are new flowers that i have added uh, or bought recently and um there is a um a fun studio vlog coming i think on monday so the video after this and it will look a little bit like a jungle in my kitchen because i brought all the plants that i want to replant um, add some fresh soil and change the pots over also i bought a couple more plants which are new so i wanted just to share it with you and um, there will be a little uh, part where i'm actually planting a baby orchid well you'll see it all but it's coming uh, on monday and from those two new plants which actually now live on my windowsill in the studio i have done the drawing so i think it's quite relevant for you to see where i get my inspiration for botanical uh, modern botanical drawing how i approach uh, a simplicity of lines how i kind of uh, keep it straight to the point without adding too much detail and how i add uh, a bit of stylistic approach to it as well so that is what we're going to be doing oh let me show you those two plants that i uh, drew from so one is here so is this baby right here he's super cute it's a fern and as you can see, the leaves are just really, really gorgeous. And it's fun to look at the structure. <laughs> I'm trying to hide behind it so it focuses as well. So that's this one here, basically. Like that. And then I'll show you the second one. Personally, I love ferns because there is something so airy and 
tropical about them. I love them. There's loads of ferns growing actually in the um, hamster teeth. I always wonder how or why. I always associated ferns with hot climates and kind of a lot of moisture. There's definitely a lot of moisture in England from all the rain, but uh, just not as hot. But yeah, they do really well. It's like in, in Hampstead Heath, it's wild safari. If you look into the green areas, there's so many ferns growing there. So the other one, which is on this page here, I have done a bit of a stylistic approach and added a little bit of kind of detail there. Um, so this baby here, he's super gorgeous. He's got beautiful gray color to it. Um, it's called Senisio Clania and it comes from Canary Isles. So how cute is this plant? Okay, enough said, enough showed. Let's uh, pop over to my desk. Before we go into the water collection, of course, I want to show you what I got at Cassart and um, let's have a tour first and then we get to the supplies. Let's take you inside Cassart. It's my favorite art supplies physical shop. And whenever I'm in Hempstead, I always make sure I pop in there. It just gives me good memories and um, it has a great vibe in there. Everyone is super friendly, the staff is very helpful and friendly and if you have any questions they're always there to answer them and of course I always check out their watercolor section. Also find things like markers whether they are acrylic markers or water soluble markers I find it very difficult to shop for online unless I have seen the exact color someone's watch here on YouTube and then I know what I'm going after but otherwise if there's a color I have in mind and I'm trying to source it online then it's a bit difficult also these oil sticks by Senelier I wish I had all of them and uh, sometimes again it's very hard to tell the right color so when you have it on the display it's just so much easier so I had a blast of a time at Cassart and let's have a look what kind of things I bought what's inside my little shopping bag so now let's look at the things that I got not too much but a few things is a little gallery guide um, that I got from a gallery in Hampstead. There are a couple of galleries in there so it's always useful to have a pop in there. Okay so here we go. I have got what's this? Supporting artists for over 100 years. I didn't read this but I thought the history of Cassard is definitely something I'd be interested in because I don't actually know how Cassard happened to be, so once I read all of this, I will let you know. But I do like how they have created this uh, leaflet, and uh, it's very cool. So they're apparently, in 2017, there were 12 stores across the UK. I've been to two of their shops. I have been to um, one in central London and then obviously one in Hampstead. Then there was this lovely card which is the store in Hampstead and I had to get it because I really liked the look of it. Really beautifully illustrated. It reminds me of Hampstead which I loved living in. So it's good, good little postcard. So a few things that I got and uh, one of them I realized I already have. 
Of course, it's very difficult at this point to fully know exactly color that I own. And um, so it can happen. But let's start with the Sennelier oil sticks. Now, it is difficult to judge the colors when you're shopping online. And I was not aware that they had this light blue color, which is, I hope, exactly what it looks like. Uh, once it dries, it's beautiful. It's a perfect blue that I would add to my abstract art. And this color is called light blue. Nice and simple. So that's a gorgeous one. And then there is one which is called Alizarin Violet Lake. And I believe that's the one. There is also Mother Lake Pink. I wasn't sure, but I think I have this one. Let me double check. While I'm at it, I thought I'll show you my blues and my neutrals and all of that. So I've got here these blues and you can see it will be a lovely addition to the blue colors. And then the neutrals are these and I have a red one, this is Mars Violet. So it probably is in the other one here, let's see. Alizarin Violet Lake, yeah. So I've got this one and I will keep it. I mean, I love this color, it's gorgeous. Alizarin Violet Lake? No, it can't be that. No, no, no. Something is not quite right here because this is a very like purpley color. I don't know if you can see it. Let me take it out. It's definitely not this color. It has to be something else. Look at that. But it says a lizard in Violet Lake. Number 940. How bizarre is this? Well, we will only find out once I open it because I can't see any other color that could be it. I don't have anything else like that. I also have this color here. So this is the Mother Lake Pink and it's different to that one. So it's not this color. So it's like a Let's see if I put them side by side. This one comes off more brown, I hope. You can see that. So that's that. Also, separately to the... Um, to the cast art, I have also received my sepia, which I ordered before Christmas, I think, and they, um, on Jackson's, and they didn't have it in stock. So it just arrived the other day. Uh, so I've got raw amber, but this is sepia. So let's put all these new colors into this tray. So remember to switch them. This is very interesting. It just looks completely different. I mean, even from here, you can see it's more purple than the bottom. I mean, the bottom has never been touched. Fair enough. Maybe there's some sort of oxi oxidation happening. But how do I know if they're different? How do I know which one is the actual alizarin violet lake? Am I not seeing something? No, because they're the same number, so they have to be the same. Anyway, no idea what happened there. Let's move on to the uh, other items. So this little thing here, I actually needed to get it and I saw it in, in the shop, so I grabbed it. It is for those chunky Stabilo pencils. I have one, I believe, just the white one. And... I, you know, couldn't really sharpen them because nothing would fit it. Let me try and find where it is. So as you can see, it's super, super chunky. And this sharpener is designed for that. So I wonder how fine you could get the tip to be. I doubt it will be too fine, judging by where it gets to. I'm actually intrigued, so I'm going to try and sharpen it now. 
Also, as I was looking for the sharpener, I found this golden color, which I forgot I had, um, by also by the Sanlia oil stick. So I'll definitely add it somewhere here. It's a beautiful gold. It sharpens it really easy, so you don't need to put too much effort into it, but I think this is it. Yeah, that's it. It won't go any further. So basically, it doesn't really sharpen the tip to a fine point. It just takes away the, the wooden part here to expose it more, and that is it. So... I guess these are chunky, they were not designed for a fine line. They're water soluble. So the next few bits are in here. Little box, I think these were the oil pastels. Yeah, two colors that I, again, not sure if I have already one of them. Didn't have the swatches with me, but it really stood out to me. So this is the royal blue. There is a likelihood or a high likelihood that I already have the, the this color. But I know for sure that the Chinese orange, I don't have it in oil pastel. And this color I have in Sanelier watercolor and I absolutely love it. So it'd be good to see whether it looks the same in the sense of the um, um, color. It's um, obviously going to be a different texture. Before we move on to the last part here with the pencils, um, I will also try to find if I have these colors. So royal blue is going to be nice and easy. The only blue I have here is actually different. It's blue chromium green. Oh, so no, I don't have it in here. Let's have a look if I have it <clears throat> in the Portraits oil pastel set. There is something here and it is royal blue, yeah. So it is in this set. And I definitely don't have the orange the Chinese orange, so we will swatch that. So now let's have a look inside the little package here. A few of these things I have actually already used. And that is because I've done that illustration. Let me see. Yes, so it's in here. I think it's probably already up on my channel, so you probably can watch the tutorial, but here are the four pencils, and this color here is right there. Tombow marker, I didn't have it. So that was good actually, because when I went to Cassard, I did take a tiny sketchbook with me, which had all of my markers swatched out, so acrylic markers and Tombows. And I could pretty much very easily say or tell which colors I already have. So that was very, very useful. There's a couple of colors I picked up which I already did have, but anyway. So that's that, and then I also got this Uni Posca in khaki green. I know I don't have this color, and it's the PC3M, which I quite like. This nib is doesn't have any problems at all. It's very reliable. So now let's swatch all of these items and see what they look like. So let's start with the oil pastels. I'm going to just remind you what royal blue looks like. So this is royal blue and next to it I'll swatch this color which is slightly different is blue chromium green. So 
so this one has more of like a lilac tint it has a little bit more red in there and then we have Chinese orange oh goodness that is beautiful and it's got lovely transparency as well wow it's glowing off the page beautiful I'm really happy about this one stunning color I think it's going to be my top favorite <laughs> and then we have khaki green so this is an acrylic paint marker and it is that muddy dark green color lovely color it's quite deep and a color that I'm glad to add to the collection. Then we have the Tombow, this is 026. And this is a lovely yellow ochre type of a color. And it's water soluble. Love how fine the nibbles. I'm going to use my water brush here and just to show you. Oh, that was way too much. So the color is nicely intense. Then we'll take a while to dry. So it's kind of got that mustard feel to it. Very vibrant for a yellow ochre. And then let's look into these colors. So these three, these four colors, this is how they were arranged in the shop. And I really liked that color palette. So these are water soluble. They are by Fabricastel and they're called Albrecht Dura. So that's their artist grade watercolor pencil great for botanicals these greens look really lovely so i bought these pencils mainly for the color As, as far as watercolour pencils come, Albrecht Dura are not my favourite, although they're great quality, obviously. But I do like this colour group right here. So we've got all these swatched and now we just have the oil sticks left and I need to prepare them a little bit. So I need to take off the clear film and also the film that they dry into and once I do that I then can swatch them for you and I'm very excited to see them on paper. Okay so let's now look into the colors. I've got the other alizarin violet lake here so let's try them first shall we. So I'm going to swatch them here. So here's the new one And I will use a bit of spatula just to push the color out a bit. And here is the one that I had before. And I feel like, although quite similar, yeah, no, they're definitely different. So this one has more, I mean, you can see it from the From the stick already. I'll show you a close-up so you can see it for yourself. So there you go. I think it is obvious that they are slightly different. Here is a bit more warmth at say and this is more cool. But yeah, quite a big um 
color shift in my opinion. Still, I, I like them and in a way I'm kind of happy that they're not identical. But this color I really, really like a lot. So the fact that this is not the same, not sure how I feel about that. And then let's do the other red, which is the Mother Lake Pink. This one I definitely don't have. Oh wow, that's a beautiful one. It's definitely transparent. The transparent colors are a little bit more difficult to build up texture with. You can still do it, just not as obvious. And then we have these two. So I'm just going to place them here. And the blue will keep separate. So we've got the brown, which is the sepia. It's a dark color. Oh, it's kind of very similar to this khaki green, actually. A bit more browner, but it definitely has a green tone to it. Also fairly transparent. There's definitely a lot of yellow coming through, which I quite like. And then, let's see, the blue one is the color that I'm probably most excited about. Oh, that's beautiful. I think I have an acrylic paint similar to this color. I'm very happy to have oils stick in this color because I wasn't even aware that they do. This color from the from the swatches, you know, online is very difficult to see that. That's beautiful. Love it. I think I will definitely create a series of abstract paintings with this color. So, oh my gosh, look at my hands. <laughs> so, let's have a quick look at all these colors and I'd say my favorites would have to be the light blue, Chinese orange and yellow gold. So by the way Tombos don't write the name on their markers, which is I think quite unfortunate because everyone loves a good name and you remember them by names rather than by numbers. I mean, who would remember color by number? It's, it's just impossible. So uh, yeah, so you have to look them up by number online and then write it somewhere down so you can remember that way. But basically it's a 026 yellow gold. Actually looking at this color, it also seems to have a glow effect about it. Really, really beautiful. I think it comes off a little bit warmer um, on the camera than in real life. In real life, it has a little bit more of a raspberry to it. So, thank you for watching. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment, and I will see you soon.